Hi guys, well I guess you feel like myself, um, disappointing, really disappointing last night's result against France, missed opportunity, I know it's pretty obvious, especially after Morocco knocked out Portugal, you must be absolutely loving life right now if you're French because um, they were really in a game last night, I thought we were pretty good although I think we could have been better but I also think we were playing against um, a referee who was not only inept but was corrupted uh, by the system um, I would suggest that his bank balance is a little bit healthier um, and uh, he's definitely a brown envelope milk merchant because that was just unbelievable the French goal happened because of an overlooked scenario regarding Bakaya Saka where he was definitely fouled let's be honest he was totally um, fouled at that moment and it was vast duty to look back at that incident and therefore rule out their goal it was a good goal um, too many great strike and all that one but uh, and then of course come the double whammy where uh, we should have been given a penalty now I know it was possibly outside the box but there was a double contact the second one was obviously inside the box and let's be honest we've seen penalties given at that particular point and for the referee to go off and have a look well, at that point you kind of think it's definitely going to go your way but um, he wasn't interested in that at all and you know, there were some ironic cheers from the England supporters that were there um, last night when, you know, we gave a decision in our favour. Um, it was just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Um, it, was, it was almost too favourable towards France, you know, and uh, I think, they, as I say, they got away with that one. And I think they knew that at the end. Um, but um, getting ourselves back in, to the game, um, Harry Kane, his first penalty was fantastic, just smashed it in. You thought that we were definitely then um, going to gain momentum and then poor marking allowed Olivia Giroud to go in 2-1 to France. But then you get given a lifeline, you know, eight, seven, eight minutes from time and um, another penalty and I think because it was against Lloris and I think he was going to put it in the same place he kind of over thought it through I thought Giroud was a bit unsportsmanlike the way he was kind of um, delaying the situation for, for Kane but uh, you know he, he leaned back and he put the ball over and that is unforgivable because at least we all know that you can miss a penalty players have done that and it was a very much a pressurised set of circumstances, but bottom line is you've almost must hit the fucking target, you know. And uh, it's um, that was it basically, you know. And to see Kylian and back his face after that, it was sickening, as indeed it was watching those French supporters outside the stadium, uh, you know, throwing uh, it's coming home back back in our faces, like you know, Gatwick over that way. And, he throws that way and bye bye and all that old bollocks. Uh, in a way, I guess, I hope um, Croatia or even Morocco um, win the World Cup, but I think it's going to be an Argentina France final. And you add, maybe it's all been planned that way for a last hurrah for, for Messi. I don't know. I really, really, really don't know. But France may be able to do something which only one side's ever done, Brazil, in the 50s, and that is, um, you know, back-to-back -back World Cup. And uh, they've got a massive chance to have it right, a really, really massive chance. And uh, as I say, it's disappointing more than anything. Um, interesting what Rio Ferdinand had to say about the substitutions, and I think he was right about that. He should have made it a lot, lot sooner, especially when it was at 1-1, because I think we had the momentum at that point. And I think they were starting to tire and if we brought in or brought on those extra talented players that were sat on the bench and Mount's um, first bit of action was massive, you know, you 
he's obviously got us the penalty. And uh, as we all know, obviously we didn't take advantage of that. Um, but taking off Bakaya Saka, who I thought was probably our best player, just didn't make any sense to me. So I'd like to see Southgate go. I think he's been a very, very lucky lad. Um, he's had a, you know, a generational bunch, of talented bunch of players at his disposal. Probably the best England set of lads for, for, for decades. And let's have it right, although we reached the semi-finals of the last World Cup and the final of Euros and the quarters this time around, we've been very, very fortunate with the draws, you know. Um, lots of teams have been eliminated where they weren't expected to or we've fallen on the right side of the draw. Um, and I, I just think when you get those opportunities, you have to take them. And that's the difference between being a good man manage, manager uh, and a tactical uh, manager and I see there's lots of talk about Thomas Tuchel uh, taking over the England manager's role again uh, you know I think he'd be perfect for the job and I think for me it's a, almost the lesser of two evils because I don't want him to see him go off and succeed anywhere and if he is going to succeed I'd rather him do it for our national side England I'd really be devastated if he became the manager of uh, one of our Premier League rivals especially someone from London perhaps maybe if Conte, Conte was to go, you could see them going in for someone like Tuchel. Why wouldn't you? You know, he's a class act. Um, personally speaking, um, I'd like to see him back as our manager, but if that ain't going to happen, then the next best thing, I guess, is England. So, you know, it would be a good call. What do you think about that one, guys? Um, now, Chelsea play a day, as we know, in Abu Dhabi, uh, United Amad, Emirates. And we lost the game to an experienced Aston Villa team. Our side was mostly made up of kids. Uh, and um, we lost the game, considered an early goal. Uh, but what was the worst aspect of, of, of it is it's happened again. Uh, one of our players, long-term injury, uh, Amanda Brozier, who kind of, it was a bit of an innocuous challenge with the Villa goalkeeper. But you'd hear him screaming and howling in pain. It's horrible here actually. You could see he was massively in trouble. The Villa players were sort of waving on for us to bring get some medical assistance to him and he was stretched off and um I believe I'm just looking it up here, it was, it's an anterior cruciate ligament issue, or at least that's what they think. And if that's the case he's gonna be out for the rest of the season. So I guess that brings you into um conversation the need for a striker perhaps in this January window because he was definitely part of Graham Potter's plans. Let's, you know, let's, let's have it right. So, so I, I, I guess, you know, we need to now start thinking about that one because it doesn't look like he's going to be ready for this particular season. Um, so we have to start thinking about another, another striker. But it was a good run out. I guess it was an exercise of gaining some fitness. I see Potter's tweeted out that he was, despite the, loss it was a good um, opportunity to get to know his players and you know and, and to work with players that he doesn't work with before and the young, give the youngsters a chance and it was a good bonding mission and did I did I do but um, it's still another defeat and uh, I just think we need to get back to being who we are and that's Chelsea FC and, uh, and not accepting this sort of um, second best well we've got a lot of goodness out of it and we're planning for the future well that's great but you can only do that for so long that's the point I'm trying to make um, and uh, we have to get back to where we are and what we're all about um, sooner rather than later um, anything else oh, Eden has a little mention about him he's uh, sort of hung up his boots from an international perspective sad about all Eden to be fair because he was just a fantastic player for us and his career although he was going off for a personal thing i.e. with Real Madrid that was the only club as he said he would actually leave Chelsea for hasn't really worked out he's been injury prone and you know that Eden Hazard you know the player that we lost which was dated about still am to be honest with you I'd like to see him come back only if it's possible to recreate the world again with him right you know and get that Eden Hazard back in the side, he was just an incredible player, we all loved him, 
and it's just not worked out for him but sad to see and uh, well, he's hung up his boots and that so he'll no longer be playing in a Belgium shirt anything else with Christian Pulisic bit of news about him and in particular Newcastle uh, 40 million pounds they're talking about I could see that happening um, because the guy wants first team football and he's not guaranteed that uh, even with Graham Potter um, he's had a good World Cup as we all know so 40 million would you take that do you think that's good a uh, good price for him as it's about right for him we know Newcastle got the money and we know he's a player that have, has created a bit of interest for him I know Arsenal have been sniffing Manchester United have been sniffing away to and there was a bit of talk about Bayern Munich with a player exchange swap deal but I think the powers that be down there um, in Germany are not too not too keen about that particular one so he's been uh, linked with Newcastle um, and apart from that not really much more um, to talk about so uh, as I say it's not coming home uh, will you watch the rest of the fo- you know the football now I don't think I will to be fair I was kind of getting into it where I wasn't really particularly looking forward to it um, but you know just that momentum and it carries you through because you want to see your country do well let's be honest um, but um, as I say the future is bright we have got some great players out there and I guess there'll be some players now that will probably hang up their boots um, and it's sad to see them all upset at the end but when you get those opportunities in life you have to take them and uh, you know life is all about uh, winning and uh, you know, they, although they did play well, and I think France know, knew that, you know, as I say, and, and any bit of luck that was available on the day, it would definitely win France's way. That said, we know they were a quality side, and I guess it's no shame they come back with their heads held high because uh, the minimum requirements is to make the quarterfinals, you know, the final um, eight. So they did that. It's just a shame that the journey doesn't continue and, um, you know, <laughs> how would we be feeling about that one? Morocco um, uh, in the semis and would have fancied us for that and it's an I would have fancied us against Croatia and Argentina, to be fair. I just would, I just would, but I think it's a clear route now for France to be back-to-back world champions. There you go, guys. Anyway, um, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Much love uh, to you all, as always. Really, really sad about uh, Broja. Um, did you watch the game today? What did you think about it? It was actually live on the internet. It was live on the fifth stand. It was live on Chelsea's own YouTube channel. Um, did you watch it? Uh, what do you think about England? What do you think about Gareth Southgate? Do we persevere with him or do we just chop it now? that we can what do you think about Thomas Tuchel being the England manager and uh, Christian Pulisic and No Garcel speak to you soon guys up the Chelsea Layers.